This is Success Beyond the Score, giving insights and tips to help you learn how to build your music career from the best in the field by Millicent Stevenson. Millicent is a multi-award winning saxophonist and endorser of Harry Hartman's Fiber Reads. She is currently serving on the Executive Committee of the Musicians' Union. With over 40 years experience in the creative industry, Millicent has honed her performance and business skills. She provides personal development training and coaching via her online platform, successbeyondthescore.com. Hi, and welcome to Success Beyond the Score. I'm Millicent Stevenson, and thank you so much for joining me today. Now I'm going to pick up with my conversation with Anna Brooks. Anna is a professional saxophonist, an international touring and recording artist with the Brooklyn Funk Essentials and also the Jules Holland Rhythm and Blues Orchestra. She is a music arranger, music director, music preparation specialist, teacher at the Birmingham Conservatoire and singer. Today, you'll hear how Anna coped with COVID-19. She's going to give you her tips for transitioning your music into a full-time professional career. Anna describes her music career as going a little bit backwards to go forwards in that she had her children and then she started her career. So we're going to hear all about that. Now, this recording was taken during lockdown over Zoom. So if you're watching or listening, there'll be a slight difference in the sound quality between the show intro and the interview. But the information, as always, is A+. Here is Anna Brooks. So 2020, three quarters of the year has been taken over by Corona COVID <laughs> from March through December. Um, yeah. How has it been for you as a full time musician? Um, what have you done to sort of navigate this very choppy time? Um, built this studio. <laughs> it's amazing how many musicians have built recording studios in their gardens during this time you know if if you're a a, a touring musician you're on the road all the time you don't get that much time at home and you know we've we've really needed a distraction during these times you know Mm -hmm. and um this is one thing that 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 we have done um, this recording studio was actually the, in the jewelry quarter in in Birmingham, and so the entire music studio has moved to a, a building in our back garden now, which is it's absolutely amazing. It's fantastic. So that has been one thing that, if you can say, there's a positive of the whole situation. Mm. Um, that is one thing um, that is a positive because I don't know when we've wanted to do this before and we've spoken about it but we've never actually had the time Mm. to to do it because we've not been around enough um so that that's one thing um positive um (laughs) lots of negatives uh, lots of negative i mean it's been devastating it breaks my heart it really really breaks my heart Mm. um you know i know so many musicians who have been unable to work. Um, you know, musicians are um, driving taxis and um, supermarket deliveries and delivering pizzas, and you know, they're not able mm. to do what they what they love. They're not able to, you know, they're not able to work. And I, I haven't done anything else, um, which is partly a conscious decision because. I don't know, maybe this will come back to bite me, but I don't feel like I should. I Mm. think musicians should be supported, um, not retrained. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, Without meaning to get political, you know. Um, So I've been um, able to practice more extensively for the first time in a long time, which has been great. Yeah. Um, But I've not been able to work. And I've just watched, you know, venues close and my entire diary this would have been my first year um my full year touring with um Jules Holland and the band mm. and um after the little tour that I did with the six piece band um in March I actually came back from the tour with COVID-19 in in March um and um haven't obviously haven't played with the band since then I've really really missed 
the interaction with other musicians. And I know that's something that musicians have really missed as well. And a lot of people's mental health has suffered as well as their income being absolutely devastated. I mean, you know, Mm. really, really devastated, which has also, has also happened to us. Mm. Um, But I'm hopeful that, maybe next year maybe not early but maybe all of the gigs that have been postponed um you know until sort of summer and onwards next year will happen um had a really had quite um quite a moment recently um just a few days ago when we were um rehearsing with Jules and the band and um it's very odd playing at two and a half meters away from everybody. So, because yeah. as wind, as wind instrumentalists and and vocalists, we have to be two and a half meters away. So, mm. playing in a socially distanced environment is 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 quite tricky and quite challenging um, as well. Um, and you know, everyone was really happy to see their band members, but of course, no one can give anyone a hug. Yeah. So all you want yeah. to do is, you know, hug, hug but, each other. Yeah. Um, but there was a really, there was a really beautiful moment, um, actually, when um, Ruby Turner came in and rehearsed a piece that she was doing and, well, not rehearsed, she doesn't need to rehearse, she just comes in and sings. <laughs> She's just amazing. And um, the whole band, after mm. she sang, there was, a, there was just an amazing vibe that I think everyone had missed a connection you know a musical connection that Mm. that we absolutely thrive on as as musicians because we we you know we do it because it's our passion it's not a job it's an absolute passion for me it's a passion it's a calling Mm. and ruby came and sang and there was such uh it was like electricity i know it sounds like a cliche but you could really really feel it and you could really feel that people had missed that and uh, and we stopped and it went absolutely quiet at the end and i I, I completely teared up you know oh, I thought this is this yeah. is what this is what we do you know yeah, I could feel yeah. it I could feel it in my heart and yeah. I'd missed it so much I'd missed uh, you know that like I say that non-verbal communication it's a feeling with music it's something you can't express in words and that's why it's such an amazing thing and that's why music appeals to ma- so many people that's why it speaks to the soul because you don't have to articulate it you feel it and yeah. It was quite a moment and I looked around and I don't think I was the only one who was a little bit yeah. teary-eyed. You I mean, know? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I believe in everything you've just said there and I, and I often think, why doesn't the government do something to allow music and the arts to yeah. be active during this time because it would make so many people better and well and we need fighting more, yeah. fit you know what I mean we, absolutely we need, we absolutely we yeah <laughs> yeah we need we need we do need more support we um do. you know we we got another self-employed income support yep. scheme grant but not everyone's eligible for that and you know it, it's great to have that but we need to get back to work in a socially distanced way and Mm. I don't feel like enough is being done you know there's a lot of talk about the hospitality sector and and Mm. and of course you know that I have you know my my sympathies is with them as well Um, but we haven't been able to work at all it's not just a case of in and out of lockdown and you know restaurants and and um, places have been able to work a little and I know it's been terrible for them as well but we haven't been able to work at all and I feel like there was an initial bit of noise about the plight of the arts and the music industry um, when we first went into lockdown but I feel like we've been a bit forgotten since then yeah because we're still here and we're still not able to work yeah it's you know? um it's um without trying to get too political but I, I do yes think that apologies the, I know I mean not for you it's all for me I could say a lot on this sub- subject yeah but yeah I, I do think the government's got this bit wrong and yeah. you know what musicians union are speaking to the government they are oh, knocking on doors yes. they are doing things but the government yeah. have got to start listening. I think they're they're more yeah. interested in telling us to keep quiet, stay in your houses and lock your doors. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. that human contact and music is so important. It, yeah. It, there, yeah. There's so much research out there to prove what music and art, dance, poetry, paintings, everything. It, it, there's so much out there to prove how much it does for us as a human beings. Absolutely. To one side, but... Absolutely. Okay. And I have to say, I am a Musicians Union member and the Musicians Union, you know, I've been, they, they, they've been great in keeping everybody informed and, 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 and in the financial support that they have given as well. And um, yes, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm yeah. very grateful to the Musicians Union. I've been a Musicians Union member since I was, well, 
I won't say how long, how long is that now? 30 years. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 30 years, I mean, and um, they have helped me, really, really helped me out yeah. when, when I've needed it. So yeah. um, at various times in my career, so I'm very grateful to them. Good. Thank you. Okay, then, let me slick check my little... Okay, one of my questions you've already answered, I'm not going to go there. Okay, let me... Um... Was there something? All right, let's come to this one because we can start wrapping up. Mm -hmm. What are your three tips? And you can give more, but what are your three tips to get to anyone who wants to have a full time career in music? And you know, right. let's before you while you think about that, because there are some people I know who have, when they were at school, wanted to go into music, but their parents have said, "Don't go into music; you mm -hmm. can't make a living out of that." Or people mm -hmm. who have tried making a living in music but it's not work but you're a full-time musician a sex successfully full-time i know covid's knocked everybody so that's you know yeah well that's one side but you've yeah. done it you you know you, you you've done music prep you're an arranger director mm -hmm. performer touring recording all this kind of thing so what are your tips to help people transition their music into a full-time career okay so i think if you're Three tips, that's a, that's a tricky one. I would say... Well, let's extend it to five then if you need five. Okay, well, <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Let me see how many I come up with. Then. Oh, um, do ten. First, of all, <laughs> first of all, I would say if it's not... If you're, if you're thinking, is being um, a professional musician the right thing for me? Hmm. Um, the answer is if it's not... If it's not your passion, you should know the answer to that. You shouldn't... You shouldn't be asking yourself, is this the right thing? It, sh it should be your passion. Mm -hmm. It needs to be your passion mm -hmm. um, because that passion is what will drive you to practice, to, to work hard. Um, it, it has to be your calling because it's not an easy job. Um, mm -hmm. You know, some a, a few people get lucky and make an absolute ton of money um a lot of people you know get great um artistically fulfilling projects and have a wonderful time but don't earn a lot of money you know it's not as as, as glamorous as it as it might seem mm. um so it has to be your passion and your passion is also that's kind of that's what what saves you as well when you get knockbacks that what that's what makes you get up when you get you know, when you get kicked down or if you miss an opportunity or, mm. you know, if a gig, if you think you're going to get a, a, a prestigious gig and it ends up going to somebody else, it's your passion that that, that keeps you going. So it's not, it's got to be your calling. It's not something you can dabble with, mm. basically. So you need passion. You've got to have that passion. And of course, that ultimately is, um, is what what people will pick up on when you play so you know you've got to have passion in the way that you perform as well you've got to perform with something that speaks to other people um and so that's absolutely essential i would say um you know without without that passion your music isn't going to speak to other people and i think often, often if you think about i don't know maybe think about your favorite song or your favorite artist and if you think why is that my favorite song or why is that person my favorite artist it's usually or you know 99.9 .9 times um out of 100 it will be because it gets you in the heart it speaks yeah. to you yeah you know yeah. and that is because that particular artist is sharing their 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 passion with you mm. in my view so mm. number one passion um number two tips for if you're going to be a professional you've you've got to you've got to study hard and practice hard you've got to know your craft inside and out there is no app or <laughs> hack or quick fix to get you from you know a beginner saxophonist to a professional in six months it doesn't exist it's hard slog it's repetition it's practice it's dedication um and knowledge and as i said before you know you don't you don't have to study at, at, at um at, at a university um or go to music college but the knowledge is all out there for you to for you to gain so you've you, you've got to study 
in whatever way that might be, whether that's your own personally directed mm -hmm. study or if it's a formal kind of higher education or further education, you need to know your craft and you need to study and work hard and it's not going to happen overnight. You know? <laughs> There's Definitely. no way. No, no not overnight. No. Not overnight. Um, and then I think tip number three from my point of view is to build a portfolio career. So, um, you know, if I look at what I do, there are times when I do, you know, maybe one aspect of, of, of um, my career where I'll be working on that more than another. So I might be working on an album, um, either, you know, as part of the band like Brooklyn Funk Essentials or, 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 or an album of my own. Um, and that's eventually, hopefully going to generate some income or, uh, and then another time I might be um, arranging for um, a, a particular musician or, a, or, a, or a theater show, or, you know, sometimes I arrange music for cruise ships for people who say, you know, who like me to, to, to make them a whole set for you know something like that um that might be taking up a lot of my time or it might be in the quieter times um, i'm always teaching at the birmingham conservatoire um th but that portfolio career is absolutely essential because otherwise if you're only doing one thing and then obviously there's all the, the touring and the gigs mm -hmm. you know gigs makes up the vast 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 majority of my of my um, income as a professional musician but obviously um, right now there there ain't no gigs really you know <laughs> um, so luckily you know I've got a, the, the little bit of teaching that I do at the Birmingham Conservatoire kind of almost pays the bills nothing's paying the bills entirely right now it's you know, <laughs> <laughs> because just because of the situation we're in yes, but yeah. you know um i had a um i had a surprise ppl payment that came in the other day oh, right. and that that was from you know that was from my album my jazz album mm -hmm. um so writing music performing music these are all things i would say i would suggest mm -hmm. so and maybe pick a few or all but Compose your own music and publish it because then you will get your writer's credits. Um, you know, perform music and not necessarily just with other bands, but your your own thing as well. Mm. You know, um, I'm still out there. I, 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 if, if somebody wants me to go and play for their wedding, I will still go and do it. In fact, I actually have, here I am complaining about no work. I actually am playing for somebody's wedding tomorrow, which is quite astonishing just just 15 people because those are the regulations yeah, you know? yeah. Um, and all very socially distanced but take every opportunity you know <laughs> um and i i have no qualms i am not a musical swap snob i don't think any form of musical performance is better than any other there's some that i enjoy more but you know um so performance um yeah composing um music you know arranging music there are so many different things that you can do um obviously a lot of people do um you know youtube um putting content and making money from that mm. just diversify you know mm. um and also it's really really useful to not just play one instrument yeah. and the fact that i do a lot of um, backing vocals and um and some lead vocals as well i think that has made me a lot more employable so if there's something that you do um that's not necessarily your main instrument don't be afraid to to put that out there and mm. include that um in whatever you're doing if it's your your own project having said that i'm not about to get my violin out of the loft because i haven't touched that <laughs> for like 20 years actually i did get it out a while ago i went yeah you know what i'll just <laughs> <laughs> but you know I could get it out and, and brush it up and record my own string yeah, parts you know anything yeah. like that that makes um, what you do a little bit more yeah. um, unique um, yeah. do it you know don't don't be afraid um, to to use other skills that you might have other musical skills even if you feel they're you know slightly lesser not necessarily because that might just be your kind of niche thing that um, yeah. helps people recognize you so portfolio career super excellent. super important excellent. diversify excellent. Lovely. There's some really great tips there. Absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm wrapping up, but I still, I've just, mm -hmm. other things are popping into my mind to ask yeah. you. Because, okay, let me just ask you if you're right for time. We'll edit out. Yeah, 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 I'm fine. I'm fine. I've got nowhere to go. <laughs> Although I've got a gig tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> got a prep. I've got one myself. <laughs> <Tomorrow>. <laughs> Lucky. Uh, um, so you've got 
what seemed like a very glamorous career. <laughs> Can you think of any particular low that if you could do over again, you wouldn't do it that way? Um, I don't think there's anything in my musical career that I regret doing okay. because um, I have learned from every mistake. I think mm. that is the the best way to learn. Um, and I've done some kind of, you know, I've, I've done a lot of... <laughs> crazy stuff and you know you know for a, a mix of, of 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 music that I've played and, and people that I've 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 played with during my career but I uh, everything has been a learning experience mm. and um I think no there there have been I've had a couple of you know maybe um little mini tours and stuff where everything has gone wrong Okay. And, and, you know, I've had a couple of like tours from hell when things, you know, my suitcase went missing for 13 days oh, while I was no. on the road and it had everything in it. And, you know, that was ter terrible things like that. But that's always stuff sort of beyond, beyond your control and circumstances beyond your control. Um, but I don't think there's anything that I regret doing mm -hmm. um, or anything that I would do differently because I think I have a policy of never regretting anything. Okay. Um, and, 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 you know, and learning from it find, then. Learn, yeah. Trying to find yeah. some value in every, in every musical experience. But I think maybe it's also just because I love my job so much that even mm. the stuff that's been a bit weird or a bit left field, it's fine it's part of I love the variety um of of what I've done over the years and, and what I what I because some still people do. um so, sorry to cut in but some people no, give fine. up don't they when something goes wrong they actually give up their music career and say I'm never going to do that or I'm never going to sing again or I'm never going to yeah that doesn't sound, yeah. you're not one of those persons it seems it I can't seems I can't ever I can't ever stop doing this it's mm. my absolute it's my absolute passion no I I you know music is is me it's it's so deep in my heart that I could I could never give it up I mean don't get me wrong I've had you know I've had times I've had quieter times in my career and I've had you know some tough times where um you know things in my personal life might have affected my my career um but I don't no I still don't regret I don't regret anything and I wouldn't have done it differently it just you know, life throws things at you and you just have to deal with them and <laughs> and say, OK, you know, what what is it? What, what, what are you going to try try next? You know, what are you going to throw at me next? OK, you know, I, I'll just keep going. I will yeah. just keep going. So I've never sort of felt like, oh, I can't do this anymore. Um, you know, there have been times where um, it's been it's been quiet and I, I've been struggling to make ends meet, mm. uh, you know, as a as a single mom for a little while. That was um, that was very, very difficult. But mm. just just push through um, and you know, find a way. Um, I think the thing is, if you've got a. Um, a varied set of skills if you can build a varied set of skills then the advantage that we do have is that we can kind of create work if you go out there and you know mm. um, whether that might be more arranging work or working as a solo saxophonist or you know yeah whatever yeah, yeah. Um, no I don't regret anything and I wouldn't I wouldn't change anything no it's been a it's been a crazy journey until now but it's been really enjoyable and I kind of in a way, like I've I, I've said to, in the past, like I've, I live my life backwards. You know, I had my children um, four days before my 26th birthday. Okay. Rather than getting my career in first, I kind of got the children in first. And lots of things that people, people sort of assume um, that, you know, I've always been doing high, high profile work or that, I must have got a lucky break um, earlier on in my career, but in a way, I'm quite a late, a late bloomer. I oh, think right. maybe, maybe, yeah, because I, um, because I, I decided that I wanted to 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 have a family, and you know, of course, 
well, I did my first gig after I had my twins when they were six weeks old at, at what was Ronnie Scott's in Birmingham. <laughs> and I was I was still wearing a tent uh, <laughs> after having having two children. But, you know, um, <laughs> it didn't even, even that didn't hold me back. But um, I kind of done a lot of things in reverse in a weird in a weird way. And yeah. actually, um, yeah, and actually and that's... done things later in my career. Yeah, I think, but I think that's quite interesting, isn't it? Because it's this typical route, go to, say, do the degree, then the career starts. But you had a family yeah. first. That's right. I did the, I did the career. Um, I'm sorry, I did the uh, the um, university training. And then and then I think I thought, oh, you know what? I'll, well, maybe I'll just play in a function band and and just hunker down and have a family and then and then have my boys and thought no I'm not going to do that and actually when they were two is when I played at the Cheltenham Jazz Festival that that Jerwood um, Foundation Commission that I mentioned the boys were two and I was practicing the saxophone in the kitchen behind a baby gate to because it's the only way I could so I could watch them the other side of the baby gate in the dining room whilst trying to practice like altissimo uh on my you know on all kinds of crazy stuff on my on my alto sax and it did kind of occur to me then like most people do this the other way around right (laughs) like they do the career and then at some point they go I think I'll have kids but I I kind of had the had the boys and then and then thought actually you know I really really want to have a career Mm. as well and Mm. I will find a way and I'm like you know I'm super lucky to have had amazingly supportive parents who would look after the boys and you know when I was out playing and things like that but yeah I kind of kind of done it back to front Hmm. That's good to hear, actually. And that, 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 you know, that's good to hear because I think there are women out there who are thinking, and I know some women who are probably in their thirties are thinking maybe it's it's game over now. But listening to you, it's like mm. absolutely not, absolutely yeah. not. I mean, I think um, you know my my career my career really got started to get really kind of interesting, and more high profile when I was thirty six. Okay. Yeah. So, and yeah. I'm a bit older than that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You know. Um, you don't yeah, look it though. You don't look oh, it. Oh, bless you. Thank you. you. But no, I w- really, I would say um, it was around the time that I started to play with the Brooklyn Funk Essentials and I was 36 at, at the time. And I'm I'm actually really glad that I've done it this way around because, uh, you know, the boys are at uni now. I feel like I'm still, I'm still young and I can go out there and tour and I don't need to, I don't need to, to worry about, you know, yeah. um, when do I have a family? Because I already did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got the T-shirt on that one. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Now, yeah. I'm going to be absolutely really nosy before I, yeah. we, we wrap up. And yeah. I'm looking up your wall and I can see two records uh-huh. um, in frames. Yes. Oh, three records you've moved. Three. Now. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. tell me a little bit about this. Now, this is going so to go out on one. audio as well as video. So remember to describe okay. for All the right. audio listeners. So behind me, stage yeah. left. Um, there is, uh, yeah, there's this, this, the album with the, with the fro here. This is Brooklyn Funk Essentials, um, uh, album. It's the first Brooklyn Funk Essentials have released, gosh, six, at least six albums. They've been going since the, um, nineties and I joined the band in 2011. So this was the first album that I played on, um, which is called Funk Ain't Over. Um, and the middle one, um, this is the latest Brooklyn Funk Essential album. Yeah, it's actually yeah. me on the end. I look like I've got one leg there. Okay, uh-huh. um, and that's the latest Brooklyn Funk Essentials album. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, which is called Stay Good. Um, okay. And um, this one, I really, really love this album because it's kind of just just the six of us. And we now have on this album Alison Limerick on lead vocal. Oh. She's, our, she's our lead vocalist. Alison yeah. is amazing. I mean, she's an amazing vocalist. She's an absolutely wonderful, lovely, super talented, incredible lady, um, and a good friend. That's the that's the one there. And I'm I'm all over this one as well with uh, backing vocals as well as sax. And um, I don't think I've, I don't think there's any of my backing vocals on the first album. But um, this is so I'm on this one. I'm on um, tenor and baritone and lots of backing vocals, which I love. I, I love recording backing vocals. Mm. I love singing alongside Alison. She has such an amazing voice. Yeah. Um, so that's that. The one on the end here is um, 
Candy Dolphus Saxagogo because my uh, my fiance, Mr. Ivan Van Hetten, was um, for I think about ten years he was Candy Dolphus trumpet player. So if you look him up on the internet, you'll find lots of uh, lots of him in like nineties leather trousers and <laughs> playing alongside. And he's right there at the front of the stage, it, which is quite bizarre because when I was you know, when I fell in love with the saxophone, um, I remember um, Pick Up the Pieces was, oh, yeah. uh, and was in the charts. Yeah. And, um, and Ivan is in the video. So my future husband, I was then watching uh, with Candy Dolphin, which is quite bizarre, actually. Yeah. I think he was playing on, on this one. And he's, yeah. he's on a, a lot of those big hits from the 90s. Brilliant. Um, yeah, and this one here is there's a Dutch this is a Dutch band called um, Duma. So uh, my other half has lived in the Netherlands for a very very long time, yeah. and basically they're kind of like the Dutch equivalent of the Beatles, oh. and and he plays uh, with with them. So they should have been touring this year as well. Oh, so yeah, yeah. Really um, but that, I think that's a platinum it's a platinum album there oh. that he's recorded with them. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> He's big time. He's much more big time than me. <laughs> These are on Spotify, and just do a, a, a just a, a gratuitous plug here. Do check them out. I think um, Stay Goods had I think they've over a million spins, and oh, so you know there's and various you know uh, those yeah. uh, Spotify playlists that a lot of the Brooklyn Funk well, Essential stuff is on. So listen, how, where can people find you? You know, what if they want to check you out or book you? Um, or... So well, uh, yeah, I'm on Instagram, Anna Brooks. That's uh -huh. Brooks without an E, A W N A B R O O K S. So you can find me there. I, I got in on Instagram before anyone knew what it was and managed to get my name <laughs> completely. So yeah. um, uh, you'll find me on Facebook at, at Anna Brooks Sachs, is my um, artist page. Um, and on YouTube, I've got a channel which is just Anna Brooks. Um, there are a couple of Anna Brookses out there that aren't me, so I'd like to point out I am not the romantic stroke steamy novelist Anna Brooks. <laughs> I get tagged as, as her all the time and it looks oh, like no. some of her things are quite steamy. Um, yeah, with pictures of sort of, you know, half naked um, sort of gym fit guys on the oh. covers <laughs> saying it was him, you know. Um, so that's not me. I'm not okay. writing those to, to make a living while okay. I'm not gigging. And there's another Anna <laughs> Brooks who's I think is an Israeli singer who's on YouTube so it's quite interesting um, who turns <laughs> up um, but I am on YouTube as well the best thing is to to look for Anna Brooks saxophonist so you don't get the wrong one yeah. Uh, but yeah my YouTube channel is Anna Brooks and, and I have a website of course which is um, Anna Brooks dot rocks and I've been promising myself that I would update all my social media and website um, mm -hmm. and since we went into the first lockdown and I just haven't so at some point <laughs> <laughs> I need someone to do that for me. Yeah. So at some point, so at some point, I I, I need to get because I've got loads of new footage and 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 mm. clips um from you know the last couple of years that I need yeah. to to get up there. So that's my New Year's resolution when we get there is actually keep up to date on, with my yeah. website and put things up there because it is it's really important to have yeah. you know current stuff up there. Yeah. I think that's uh, the, that's the downside to the portfolio. You know, we've got so many things to juggle with. That sometimes the social yeah. media slips a bit yeah. but, you know, and I, but, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit I'm a bit slack with social media in I, I I've fallen in, in and out of love with it and a lot out of love a lot um, and I I really need to get my act together because I know it's it's an essential tool for musicians it is, yeah. but um, I don't know I need yeah. I need more I think it, I think the thing is just to get keep one up to date and let the other yeah yeah absolutely I, I I I you know I I I try to post the interesting stuff and live in my best life on social media. <laughs> <laughs> it looks much more glamorous than it is. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, I was saying that to um, someone I interviewed recently. I would mention her name, but I'm not sure what order the shows are going yeah. out. So I don't. Yeah. yeah. But we were talking about the glamorous side of music that it looks so glamorous, and then you you come off stage and then you've got to go um, you know clean up a diaper or exactly <laughs> go shopping exactly very yeah yeah I'll do something really really mundane, mundane yeah normal normal yeah we have, we have no 
cleaners and caterers. Well, we've and... bumped into each other at the shops across the road, haven't yeah. we? So... <laughs> <laughs> that's me like with no makeup on and, and just well we just know each other that's fine yeah 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 but yeah we know we know what it's like we know what it's like a real us and uh thank you so much for coming on for the interview it's been you really really, really very good welcome. Very well. there is so much to take away from this interview and i really hope it helps to give you insights to keep you on track to build your music career now, don't forget to check out Anna at her social media places and her website. And next time, I'll be interviewing another sterling musician. So tune in for episode 10 of Success Beyond the Score. And while you wait, don't forget to check out the previous episodes of season one and season two of my podcast. And why not grab yourself a copy of my free e-booklet called Revealed. 25 Secrets of the Successful Gigging Musician, Singer, Rapper and Spoken Word Artist. The link is in the description. Bye for now.